Hi, this video aims to get you started with Playwright on macOS, from installation to first simple script as quickly as possible. Pause now if you'd like more details. Okay, let's go. First of all, we want to make sure that we have Node.js installed on our machine. You can download the LTS version if in doubt. Proceed through the installation until the end. Once you're done with that, bring up your terminal. Okay, first things first, let's check that node has been installed correctly. Node dash dash version will be enough. Okay, we can see that node is displaying the version, the current version, that's great. What we can do now is just create a folder and we're gonna call it my dash playwright dash script. Okay, let's move into it. Okay, this is an empty folder. What we wanna do now is use npm node package manager to initialize a node project. We're gonna do an npm init dash y. This is the fastest way to do that. And now we have a standard package, package.json in that folder. You can see it there. Again, you've already seen the content of it up there, but we can cat it again. You can see what's in there, not much. We actually want to add a very important thing. I will do npm i dash dash save dev and then add Playwright. This is gonna install Playwright together with the Chromium browser. And let's open up the same directory in Visual Studio. Within this folder, we're gonna create a new file. We're gonna call it login.js. Why? Because our first script will run against Danube Web Shop. Danube is a very ugly looking web shop. It's actually a demo website. And what we're gonna do is pretend that we are testing the login functionality to a website using Playwright. So in this case, things are quite straightforward. We have to hit the login button. Email here is user at email.com. Password is super secure one. That's very secure. Then we need to hit sign in and we will assume that the message up here that is greeting us is enough to confirm that the login has actually happened. All right, let's hard reload the page, command shift R, go back to Visual Studio and get started on our script. So first off in our login.js file, we're gonna go with a const chromium within curly brackets and just go ahead and require playwright. Then we're gonna open up an async function. So this will allow us to use our async await syntax. And from there we want to do immediately two things. First of all, do a const browser equals chromium.launch. And of course we're gonna use an await here. And then we want to immediately close the browser. Let's bring up the terminal inside of Visual Studio. Just run a node login.js. Make sure you're actually invoking that async function. Node login.js again. Now everything seems to have worked. This of course runs very quickly right now. Okay, let's get going. So. What we want to do now is probably navigate to a page, right? So I'm gonna do a const page equals await browser dot new page. And then we can do an await page dot go to. And then we can enter our URL. Okay, if we run this, This will terminate almost immediately without us being able to see anything. What we want to do is first go and launch and add the option headless false. This will run in headful mode, so it will spawn a browser with a full GUI. We'll be able to see what's going on. Almost. So now you can see the browser is starting up. We're navigating and boom, everything's done already. What we want to do is actually slow things down a little bit. I'm going to do an await page dot wait for timeout and I'm gonna add 5,000 milliseconds in there. Only ever use this 
for when you're writing or troubleshooting a script. If you're using a script to test or monitor a website, never use this. This is going to come back to haunt you. Playwright has pretty good inbuilt waiting mechanisms and there's also explicit waiting mechanisms that you can use. Never rely on page dot wait for timeout aside from uh, non-production related tasks. All right, let's run that real quick. The only reason we have to wait for timeout in there is so that we can take a longer look at what's going on. Here we see the page is fully loaded, five second pass and the browser.close hits and then everything is torn down. Okay, so now let's open up our browser. Go back to dining.com, okay? So here we want again to first off select the login button. So what? how do we get that login button? We need a selector. What we can do is just right click, click inspect, click up here in the top left corner, the elements tab is open and select that button. You can see that button here highlighted. It has a bunch of different properties. The important one is ID. IDs are supposed to be unique, so they are our preferential choice. So we're going to go back into Visual Studio. We're going to add an await page.click and then enter the ID. And in front of that ID, we want to have the hash symbol because this, again, is an ID and we're using CSS selectors by default. Okay, so we have the click. What happens after that click? Actually, let's run the script real quick. Okay, everything seems fine. We proceed to the modal. Okay, while that closes, let's go back to our browser and actually start copying in all the different IDs. So we'll want to highlight the first field, which is email. It has also an ID. You can use that. What we're going to do here is actually type. So page.type is what we need. First, we need to provide the selector, again, followed by the hash symbol because it is also an ID. And then what we want to type. And in this case, it's going to be user at email.com. Same thing goes for the password. So now we want to get the ID of the second field here and dash password two. So here we go and dash password two and the password is super secure one don't worry about it this cannot be hacked oh wait page dot click and now we need to actually highlight the sign in button this also has an id that makes things easier for us go back here enter the selector again an id so hash symbol in front Let's see if we got everything right. Always make small changes and then run your script to see where you end up. Okay, we can see that we're almost done. Take that one last step. Now we can see the login message popping up. We're not going to use a full blown assertion here. We are going to do it the simple way. We're just going to do an await page dot wait for selector. We're going to enter the selector there. And then we're also going to specify that we want this to be visible. We can run script. And script does exactly what we expected. All right, remember to take out that page dot wait for timeout, save again. Let's take out the headless false. By the way, if you wanted to slow things down here, what you can do is just add slow-mo. Let's put it to 20 milliseconds and replay everything in slow motion. Okay, now we had a better idea of what was going on. Now what we want to do is also get rid of this stuff and run fully headless and do a node login.js and everything went well. What would happen if we were, for example, to sabotage our script and remove an instruction? We would actually have the wait for selector hang because this element is now not visible. Remember, this only pops up if we have performed the login. So now we're going to wait until the default timeout, which is 30 seconds, and then the, the script here is going to fail. 
you can see timeout 30,000 milliseconds exceeded waiting for selector hash login dash message to be visible all right so now you have something that resembles a test or a short monitoring script and what we can do now is jump into the official documentation playwright.dev get started using the docs which are very well made when we get a little bit more advanced we might want to jump into the api reference here and just go and for example look at how wait for selector actually works with all the options and the behavior and some examples and of course we can play around a little bit with danube store you know the credentials and they can keep you busy for a few hours i guess all right thanks for watching i hope that was helpful